so next up is three phase full converter and this is the diagram of three phase full converter it resembles the single phase full converter bridge construction but it has another extra leg so again for this case we are using a resistive load so this freewheeling diode is unnecessary and as opposed to the previous diagram this lower portion contains thyristors so we need to trigger all of these thyristors to get a conduction so this triggering is a little bit complicated as compared to the previous circuits but if you follow the pattern it will become easier and again as no terminals of the load is connected to the neutral we will have to rely on the line voltage for these types of circuits so in this circuit maintaining the triggering sequence is really important because this triggering is a little bit complex so in this case at alpha equals 0 with respect to this crossover point we need to trigger the T1 right at the moment of this crossover point or alpha equals 0 so here again I have changed the orders of these thyristors uh, I think this is easy to remember T1, T2, T3, 4, 5 and 6 as opposed to the book where uh, it will be a little complicated to remember so T1, uh, T2, T3, T5 this is a bit complex so I have rearranged this uh, in a very simple chronological order which is T1, T2, T3, 4, 5, 6 if you don't like it you can always follow uh, the diagram drawn in the book which is uh, a little bit complicated in my opinion so in order to change the chronology we have to change the triggerings as well but these changes are easy to remember so first thing first we have to trigger T1 at the desired alpha so in this case it's been triggered at alpha equals 0 with respect to this crossover point so T1 is triggered at this point so for the time being forget this portion of the T1 and forget the other repeating pulses we will be discussing it uh, in a moment so after 120 degree of 4 blocks of T1 T2 will be triggered so the gap between T1 and T2 is 4 blocks it is uh, depicted here clearly so 1 2 3 4 so T1 to T2 is 120 degree gap again from T2 to T3 there will be another 120 degree gap so from T2 to T3 here is a gap of 1 2 3 4 4 blocks or 120 degree so this is easy uh, just like the previous circuit T1 T2 and T3 is 120 degree apart or 4 blocks apart so T1 T2 and T3 remains the same as the previous circuits so here comes the tricky part T4 T5 and T6 so what is the separation between T4 and T1 T1 is triggered when A is highest and T4 is triggered when A is lowest so the separation of T1 and T4 must be 
a half cycle or 180 degree so after 180 degree of triggering T1 we need to trigger T4 so this gap must be 180 degree or 6 blocks so here you can see T1 to T4 gap is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 blocks. So the separation of T1 to T4 is 180 degree. So same thing will happen to T2 and T5. They should be separated by 180 degree as well. So from T2 to T5 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 180 degree gap. So for T3 and T6 there will be a 180 degree gap as well. So if you can draw the triggering the right way the output will be much easier to draw. Here a uh, two and a half cycle is drawn but you only need to draw it from 0 to twice pi or this gridded portion you don't need to draw this portion or this portion and the crossover point will be uh, just on the pi by 6 line so the triggering will have to repeat after every 60 degree otherwise there will be no conduction so t1 will repeat after two blocks so same goes for t4 t2 t5 t3 and t6 so to sum up the triggering t1 t2 and t3 will be spaced by 120 degree and t1 t4 T2, T5, T3, T6 will be spaced by 180 degree and every pulse will be repeated after every 60 degree. So that's the way a full wave control rectifier or full converter is triggered. So if we are done with the triggering we will start drawing the output waveforms so just in this very moment T4 and T2 is on so if T4 and T2 is on the current will start from B through T2 through load through T4 to a. So the load voltage will become VBA. So this portion of the output waveform will be copied directly from the flip version of VAB. In this portion T4 and T3 is on. So for T4 and T3 we will have V C A. So this portion of V C A will be directly copied to the output waveform. So in this section for T5 and T3 we will have V C B. So T3 and T5 we have V C B. So in this section we have T1 and T5 so we will get VAB and the cycle will continue. So if you inspect the waveforms carefully this will start at a lower value it will reach its maximum and again go to that lower value and this umbrella will continue since two thyristors are needed for circuit completion 
we will not have any output before this point because before this point there is only one thyristor conducting so we will get a continuous output after the uh, first cycle or from the beginning of the second cycle so you only need to draw from 0 to twice pi so this diagram will be something like this so if we want to draw the output wave shapes for alpha equal 30 degree the whole triggering assembly will be shifted 30 degree forward the rules will be same so t1 t2 t3 will be 120 degree apart and t1 t4 t2 t5 t3 t6 will be 180 degree apart and the pulse will be repeated after every 60 degree so again if we analyze it uh, at this moment t4 and t2 is turned on so we will get vba so we will have this split version of vab so look at the waveform at this moment this waveform is decreasing from a maximum value so the shape of vba will start at its peak and will start to decline up until this point after that t4 and t3 will cause vca and after that t3 and t5 will cause vcb but look at the web shapes these are not all the way to zero because at this moment the value of vab is not zero so you can complete the full cycle by analyzing this individual thyristors but you need to draw the triggerings very carefully if you get these triggerings wrong you will get the output wrong so you need to pay attention to the triggering sequence so for alpha equals 60 degree same thing will happen the triggerings will be forwarded by another 30 degree and in this point the value of VBA reaches 0 so again here at this point VAB becomes 0 VAB becomes 0 here as well so you need to pay attention to the shapes of the output waveform as well so after that at alpha equal 90 degree the whole assembly of the triggers will be shifted again and this time around we will have a discontinuity because in this case say VBA has gone to zero but in this portion the current will become zero so this will turn off t4 and t2 so again at this moment t4 and t3 will continue as vca but vca will reach zero at this point so there will be a discontinuity after alpha equal 60 degree if you want to formulate the values for VDC and VRMS the span of the waveform has now changed so the span has become two blocks or 60 degree so the T will be 1 by pi by 3 so pi by 3 means 60 degree 
and the limits will be pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2 plus alpha in this case if we consider only the gridded portion here alpha equals 0 so in this case the limit will be from 30 degree to 90 degree so the limit if we zoom in a little bit the limit will be from 30 degree to 90 degree and we need to determine the area under this curve so same goes for VRMS as well so these formulas can be found in the book so these formulas are easy to derive and this will become very helpful in doing maths so if we uh, go to our first map this is a three phase half wave control rectifier where line to line voltage is 208 volt the load is a resistive load which is 10 ohms uh, we need to find the output voltage and also calculate the RMS and average output current average thyristor current and rectification efficiency so first off we need to find the value of phase voltage since it isn't mentioned whether the voltage is line voltage or phase voltage we have to consider it as line voltage so to find out phase voltage we need to divide it by root 3 and to find the maximum voltage multiply that value with root 2 so so if the value of alpha is provided we must understand whether it is in continuous or discontinuous conduction mode so in case of a three phase half wave converter the discontinuity will start right after alpha is greater than 30 so in this case this will be a discontinuous conduction mode so we need to put these values in these formulas which is elaborated in the book so here only unknown values are vm and alpha so in this map we have already got the values for vm and alpha so we can find the values of vdc and vrms and since it is a resistive load of 10 ohms we can find the values of rms and average output currents by dividing these values by 10 ohms so so far we have got output voltage rms and average output currents so the average currents of each thyristor will be the main current divided by 3 since there are 3 thyristors and they will conduct for the same amount of time on an average we can get the average current of each thyristor by dividing the DC value by 3 so here comes the rectification efficiency which is PDC by PRMS VDC IDC divided by 
VRNS, IRNS. So this map is pretty simple. For the second map, this is about a semi-converter which has the same specifications as our previous map. So in this case, alpha is provided 90 degree which is a discontinuous conduction mode. So we need to put the values of alpha and Vn in these equations which has been elaborated in these equations. So all we need to know is the value of Vn and alpha. So we can get VDC and VRNS. So once we get VDC and VRNS, we will have IRNS and IDC since it is a resistive load. And again, to find out the average thyristor current, we need to divide the DC current by 3. Since there are only 3 branches and this thyristor will conduct in conjunction so for three branches we need to divide the current by three to get the average currents of each thyristor so again rectification efficiency is pdc by prms so vdc idc divided by VRNS, IRNS. So the third map is for a full converter or full wave control rectifier with the same specifications as the previous maps. So if alpha is provided, we can find the values of IRMS. IDC, average current and rectification efficiency very easily for a full converter. So this ends our lectures on three phase controlled rectifiers.